Thank you. See the song, did you pray for me? Of course he did, every day. <laughs> exactly. Oh, he prayed for you. Of course, man. Oh, it's a hardcore prayers to you. I was, was, was praying all, all the time. time. <laughs> Amazing, man. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yes. You have the Bible. Can you look at the Jeremiah chapter 1? Look up Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. You have the Bible. Look at it. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. The word of the Jeremiah, so uh, one of the priests at the uh, Anatol in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the uh, 13th year of the reign of Joshua, son of Ammon, king of Judea, uh, through the reading of uh, the Quran, son of Joshua, king of Judea, and uh, down to the fifth month of the 11th year of uh, Jezekiah, son of Joshua, king of Judea. When the people of Jerusalem went into exile, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set your path. I appoint you and your prophet to the nation. Alas, servant the Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to, to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, uh, declare the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my word in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to upload and pierce out and destroy and overthrow to build and to plant. Let's pray. Amen. Ye Heavenly Father, you made heaven and earth by your word. You say, let there be light, there was light. Will you recreate us by your word? Touch us and change us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today, I want to share with you, God is recording and using you. Yeah? He wants to give you calling first, and then God will use you. How many of you receive the calling from God? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know your calling, you can discover your calling today. Amen. I was in South Korea for three weeks. Because I didn't get the vaccination, they say one week quarantine. And I stay in the prayer mountain. I read the word of God. I read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation for one. And uh, I don't do nothing, and I read the Bible in the prayer mountain. Only oh, one I did, I eat, drink, sleeping, and read the Bible. <laughs> and pray. Amen. And, and then I enjoy it. And uh, thanks be to God. After warranty, I went to so many cities in, 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 in South Korea. So, Suma, Incha, even Jeju Island, and then all over. And then thanks be to God. And then, one lady, she saw the, my YouTube channel and she sent me a text message. And I gave her my Korean mobile number and she contacted me. Her name is uh, Sister Park. And then I told her I was to uh, pray for her and then I encouraged her to give her life to Jesus. And when she gave her life to Jesus, uh, she was crying. Yeah. And uh, she lives in uh, another city, far away from Seoul, over six hours journey. Six hundred long journey. She was in there, and uh, she she gave her life to Jesus. And she told me whenever she saw the, my preacher on the street, she always cried. She asked me, I don't know why I cried when I when Pastor Paul preached the gospel on the street. And I told her, I think you're calling to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. And she agreed. And I told her, after you gave your life to Jesus, why not to come and uh, preach the gospel together with me? And she agreed. She, she got a permission from her, her husband. Even her husband gave her life to Jesus together. <laughs> and then she came, and then she stayed together with the group, around the, you know, five people together with me. And then thanks to her, she became a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, evangelist. <laughs> And uh, she received water baptism. After she received water baptism, she has got a fire to preach the gospel. You know, whenever we go to some cities and town, and I allow the people to join, 
you know, sometimes through Facebook, you know, how many people join with me? Over 40 people. Over 40 people from all over South Korea to come and join me and then preach the gospel together. And then this, this lady, Sister Paul, she told me, Pastor Paul, I want to bless all of all of our mission evangelists uh, with uh, some coffee. I said, quite expensive. In, in Korea, it's coffee is very expensive. Three, four pounds. <laughs> it's very expensive. I said, I think almost 20 people, I, I don't want to do it. I said, you know what you say? You know, I spent a lot of money because of alcohol. And then now this little money is nothing. And then she stopped to touch the alcohol and she saved a lot of money to suffer for Amen. the mission. <laughs> Can you imagine? She said, I'm thankful I don't touch the alcohol anymore. Amen. And then and I push the gospel. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. She discovered calling. Yes. Today I'm going to share with you how God using you um, before uh, you know God using you. Number one, you need to know the calling of God. Yeah. yeah, how God used the people to understand the calling of God. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as your prophet to the nations. Can I ask a question? This man, Jeremiah, this man, he was he was conceived in his mother's womb first, or God called him to be a but, uh, to be appropriate to the nation first, which is the first? Yeah. Before he is formed in his mother's womb, God called him and he appropriate to the nation. You see? This is a mystery. Can you say, teacher, us, before you are born in this world, God called you to be born again. Say, teacher, us. Before you are born, 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 born in this world, God called you to be born again. Yes. Born again. Before you're born in this world, God called you yes. to be a born again Christian. Not only born again Christian, you have to understand that you have very uh, clear calling. Every man and woman receive the calling from God. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. Every man in this world, unfortunately, those who are not believing in all Jesus, they don't know that they are calling. There's a big problem. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. And it is like God's monologue. God speaks himself. You know, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Who are us? Anybody knows? What? Trinity. As a Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. And do you understand? Isaiah, he had uh, many relationships with Almighty God all the time. And then he didn't hear the moment of Almighty God. He hear the voice of God and he said, Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. Yeah. Isaiah, he received a very clear calling. Here I am, send me. And he became a prophet to the nations. Yeah. When God used somebody, God gave them calling. God, you know, clarify them. God speak to them. What is your calling? What is your calling? Look at the uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16. Even Saul, he was a prosecutor. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16 says, But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how to he must suffer for my name. Saul become Paul. And God say about the Saul, he is my instrument. Yeah? He is my instrument for the Gentiles, for the kings, and then the people of Israel. Do you understand that? God called you first before God using you. How many of you know that you're calling? Do you know that you're calling? You need to understand your calling of God. You know, before I was born in South Korea, God called me to be a missionary in the United Kingdom. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. Before you were born in India, yeah. God called you to be a missionary in the United Kingdom. Before you were born in, well, in, 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 in Nigeria, God called you to be a missionary in the United Kingdom. You saw that? Yeah. Everybody. Can you say to each other, I know 
my calling. Do you know your calling? Ask each other. I know, I know, I know my calling. calling. Do you know your calling? Know your calling. Yeah. Yes, Ryan, you are born in, in America. Now you are mission all over the world. You sound wonderful. Well, Charles, you are born in where? In UK. <laughs> and I met him you know, over 10 years ago. Now he started to come to church again. Well done. You are a great missionary for the glory of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to God, you see. Your, your daddy no more selling the alcohol. Well done. <laughs> Did I tell you about this? Uh, it's very funny. Your daddy called me. Oh, my dear. Oh, no, no. How many years ago you opened the alcohol of the old Yeah? Over 10. Over 10 years ago, he asked me, first of all, I'm going to open the shop. Hey, can you come and uh, bless the, our new business? I didn't know what kind of shop. When I arrived there, I saw so many alcohols. So many, you know, whiskeys and uh, very strong alcohols. And I told him, I want to I wanna claim for blessing prayer. And, <laughs> you know, what kind of blessing? Oh God, this brother, he wants to sell him alcohol. No, I ask you, can you cross this shop as soon as possible? <laughs> You signed me. First of all, you came here to curse me. <laughs> you don't curse you. It's a blessing or curse? Blessing. Blessing. You can see it. You don't understand. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. You're opening shop and then it's everything brand new. I call so many and I, I say, oh God, and then cross this uh, off license shop as soon as possible. He was very angry. How dare you come to my job and then um, curse me? Curse our job, curse our video. But there is no curse, it's a great blessing for you. Your daddy still love me, eh? <laughs> 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 you, know, <laughs> you know, it's me, it's a wife, because I know the word of the Lord. Yeah. I know the word of God. Amen. I know he's calling. You know, your dad is calling, not selling you know, alcohol anymore. That is why I was prayer like right that. You know, when you live in this world, you need to know that you are calling. If you know that you are calling, praise God. Anybody you still never know that you are calling, can you lift up your hand? Only one. I know now. <laughs> I didn't. Well, I, 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 I know that you, you know that you are calling, Sister Sam. Yes. You are a great uh, evangelist. Yes. Amen. 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 Have you seen her uh, when she was in the uh, where? Brighton? She was so powerful preacher. She saw the song. I was like you. <laughs> Holy shock. No, I'm called it shock. <laughs> and I was like, and then people were really encouraged by her message. I was so thankful. Therefore, you are a missionary. You are a missionary. Can you say to you, you are a missionary in Jesus' name? You are a missionary in Jesus' name. Especially if you are born in some. some some other country you are leaving UK, you are definitely a missionary. Even you are born in UK and then you are born again, you are a missionary. Why? Because the 300 uh, languages you use in, in London daily, which means all nations yeah, live in the United Kingdom in London. You can push the gospel. You don't need to go to some, some Asia or Africa or the Middle East. Already people is in here. Already. Sometimes. Uh, Sometimes next week or two weeks later, around the, all the 10, 10 ex-Muslims will come to our church. Because okay. ex-Muslims come to our church, don't hate them, they already come to our church. From, from Muslim to Christian. And then, and then they, they are born in Iran. And then you know, they, they, they live all over the UK. And then they, they hear the, my testimony, and they want to come, and they want to train in here. I don't know how many days, but I already prepared. Please pray for, pray for ex-Muslims, so we can go home the Christian, they need to train it properly. They can be a, a powerful uh, missionary for the glory of the Lord. Amen. If you look at the Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 20, and if Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called the Peter, and his brother, Andrew. They were cast a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their net and all came. Do you understand that? You know, Peter and, and, and Andrew, they are professional 
fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, I'll make you what? Fishers of men. Fishers of men. Yes. And the, what they did? Did they say to Jesus, oh, wait a minute, uh, I talked to you to my family, I, I, I need to take a permission from my, my wife, and my family, and, and I pray about that. Did they say like that? No, no. what did they do? They yeah. left to their father, yeah. they left to their business immediately. Yes. And follow Jesus. Yes. In this day, if you immediately follow Jesus, left your, your wife and children, you will be in very different position. But 2,000 years ago, Peter, he left his family, mm. follow Jesus. Why? Because he knows his calling. Amen. Let us live for your calling. Amen. If you know your calling, you can die for your calling. Amen? Amen. Yes. Yeah. Can you say to you, if you know your calling, you can die for your calling. Say to you, just, no, if you know your calling, you can die for your calling. Amen? I know my calling. Yeah, I know my calling. I know my calling. Many, many years ago, when I became a born again Christian, I was praying, oh God, I want to become an uh, elder in the church. And I can learn it in some of my business. I can suffer in missionary and suffer for the church. This is my, that was my prayer. But when I did it, I was praying. And God called me, you are a servant of the Lord. Anybody knows the meaning of a servant of the Lord? I never know what does the meaning of a servant of the Lord. I ask the people, what does the meaning of the servant of the Lord? My friend told me, you will be a pastor. You know, I, I hate the name of a pastor, the, 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 the job. Because a pastor is a, the job is very boring. It's a pastor job. You know, they never touch the alcohol, they never, it's a very boring life. <laughs> I, you know, I used to enjoy the alcohol, I used to enjoy the water, the water, the things. How can I become better? I, 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 you know, I can be a, I can be a, and in the church, I can, I can enjoy the world, and then I still go to the church and serve Jesus, and suffering for mission, and that was my prayer. But God called me, you're a servant of the Lord. Amen. And then, and uh, when, and because of God calling me a servant of the Lord, I went to the Bible College. When I went to the Bible College, the people they called me, John Dosani. John Dosani means uh, like the master of pastor. Whenever I heard uh, John Dosani, you know what was it? All my body is uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> so, so strange. How uncomfortable. It's very hard to go to the Bible College because of people calling me John Dosani. And I was praying and praying, Lord, I didn't want to hear this sound. General Sani means, it's, a, it's very strange, you know, like past, before the pastor, full-time pastor, I didn't like to do that kind of job. But one day when I was praying, I heard the voice of the Lord, you know what like I say? I call you General Sani. I call you as a pastor. Oh, Why wow. you didn't like? I depend. Since then, I loved the, the, my job. And pastor, I learned my job missionary. It's not wonderful news. It is. Pastor Judy, you love your job now? Amen. You, can't, you can only he get to work for two years and he wants to go back to his home. But now he's certainly in UK. <laughs> it's not wonderful. God called you yeah, to be a pastor, to be a missionary, to be a minister. This is the calling of the law. Therefore, when you receive the calling of the law, give thanks. It's very important to understand your calling. And 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 says, But you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, got a special possession, that you may declare the, the, the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you are not in people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You see, you are a holy nation, you are chosen people, you are in royal priesthood. It's not what it means, you are different now. Understand the, the, understand the, the calling of God. When Joseph was around the 17, he had a dream. <coughs> what kind of dream? He saw the sun yeah. and moon. What does the meaning of the sun? Representative of the sun. Son means his father. Moon means his mother. And he saw the eleven stars. What does it mean of eleven stars? His brothers. His brothers. And the sun and moon and eleven stars bowed down before, before Mr. Him. Joseph. Yeah. 
In Middle East culture, if a father and mother bow down before a son, that means that boy become a leader yeah. of the nations. Yeah. He was a son. He, he knew the call of God. Yeah. One day I can be a leader of the nation. He knew. That is why, you know, when Joseph, he was in, in Egypt uh, for <coughs> a slave. And the one day he became a what? prime minister in Egypt. What Joseph said to his uh, brothers, he said to his brothers like this, you didn't send me to Egypt. God sent me. Amen. King Peron didn't make me prime minister. God made me. Amen. You see? Which means God gave me calling. Mm -hmm. I know that my calling. Yeah. I know. And then, you know, it look like the, the Joseph's brother sent him to yeah. Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Look like the King Pharaoh made him you know, prime minister. No, it look like physically, practically. But I'm telling you, Joseph, he knew the calling of God. God called me to be a leader of nation. Therefore, God sent me to Egypt. Before you. God made me ruler of Egypt. Do you know? Not King Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He knows. Because he knows the calling. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you know the calling, you can speak like if this man Joseph. Yeah. And you say, no. Jesus, do you know your calling? Say, teachers, do you know your calling? Do you know your calling? Yeah, if you know your calling, you'll be blessed. I know my calling. When David was a 17, you remember David, he received the anointing by Prophet Samuel. And uh, Samuel said to him, after King Samuel, you are a second king of Israel. David, he knew when he was 17. Yeah. This young boy, you are 17, this young boy. And then, you know what, he used to wear the glasses, the glass in Korea. Mm -hmm. And then his eyes are not focused. I was praying. Last night, no, two, uh, around 20 hours ago, I was praying for him. It's eight yeah. hours different between Korea and Korea. And then I, I asked him, remove your glasses. Yeah. Said, I touched his eyes. I was praying for him. And I told him, do you want to come to UK with your glass or without the glass? That's <laughs> my request. He said, I believe that it's in I'll yeah. come to UK without the glass. He left the glass and he saw me in Korea. <laughs> That's Amen. the faith. Amen. Yeah. I believe that God healed you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And then he will be a great missionary. Amen. How many believe that he will be a great missionary in Jesus' name? Amen. 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 Anybody be with me and be ready to fight for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he is very happy about it. Amen. <laughs> you know, this is calling. Amen. If you know the calling, you know how to do it. Understand the calling. David, he received the calling to be a second king of Israel. And then God using him as a great king. I know my calling. You know your calling. If you know your calling, God can use in you. Yeah. Can you say, teacher, if you know your calling, God can use in you. Say, teacher, if you know your calling, God can use in you. Say, teacher, I believe that everybody needs to know your calling in Jesus' name. Amen. I already announced it, says Susami. You are a great evangelist in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are a great evangelist. People listen to you. People are talking. You know how to encourage the people. You know how to convince the people by the power of the Holy Spirit. Number two, when you receive the calling, also God give you power. God give you power. Look at the Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 6 to 9. Alas, so when the Lord I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to. And say, whatever I command you, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, will rescue you, declare the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I will put my words in your mouth. You see, what God say, 
Yeah? He touched the mouth of Jeremiah. And then I have put my word in your mouth. God called Jeremiah the prophet to the nations. Yet this calling. But God not just leave him like that. No. God gave him power. He said to Jeremiah, I put I have put my word in your mouth. Therefore, whatever you say something is not your word, it's my word. My word. You must go to everyone I send you. And whatever I command you, you have to speak. Do not afraid of that. Do you understand? Can you say, teacher, you receive the calling and God give you power. Also, say, teacher, you receive the calling and God give you power to push you. Yes? You know, God not only send you without the power, God give you calling and with the power. And God touched Jeremiah's the mouth. His hand touched the mouth of Jeremiah. How many of you believe that you have the word of God in your mouth? Amen. Can you touch your mouth and you say to me, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I have the word of God. I have the word of God in my mouth. In my mouth. When I open my mouth, when I open my the mouth, the word of God will come out. The word of God will come out. Touch the people. Touch the people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe that this is the promise of God. God give you power and authority in your life. Jesus Christ said, yesterday and today and forever. Same Jesus with you. Yes. You know, the Acts chapter 1 was saying, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Holy Spirit comes on you, and you receive the power. Amen. Yes. Amen. God didn't send you with, uh, without uh, his power. God sent you with the power. <clears throat> now, two weeks ago, we went to a special area, Dangok. Yeah, Dangok is the most weakest and evil area in South Korea. Mm. Over 100 witchcraft live in same street. <coughs> yes. So strong demonic spirit in that area. <coughs> we call the Buddha in Korea, Buddha. And last year I was in there. And do you know how I was preaching? Around 10 p.m. in the evening. I come with uh, some uh, the group on uh, ten people, and I say to our team, "She gonna pray. You need to have spiritual warfare against the demonic power." And at ten p.m. after ten p.m. in the evening, you know what I say? All our team pray for me, intercede for me. I say, "Mudandria." So means all the witchcraft. <laughs> at ten p.m. they they prepare to go to sleep and they who the boys. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, you need to repent your sins. All the mood under, repent your sins. Now is the time. What said the Lord Jesus? Come out from darkness. God will destroy all the plan of sin in your life. Today, surrender your life to Jesus. Come out from darkness. When I shout it like this, people shut the door and close the window. Wow. They're scary. They're so scary. They're not scaring me, but scary of what? Jesus. 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 The word was with God. The word was God. The word Amen. is Jesus. Amen. The word of God come out from what? From wow. my mouth. Yes. Guess what happened? This year again, I announce it in the Facebook. Anybody have time, please come to the Tango Get, the <laughs> last station. Please come and you can join me and preach the gospel for this uh, Mudan, this uh, rich girl people. Yes, how many people come? Over 40 people come. Oh, wow. Over 40 people come from all over Korea. I never knew them. Amen. But how do you know? It's a, you're now in the Facebook, you're now in the some church, and that, that is why I'm interested to come. And enjoy. And maybe over 40 people, we pray together. In a, uh, because I announce it, and I guess how many people may come. I, I spoke to over 40 people. I prepared the lunch. I spent a lot of money <laughs> for all the, uh, bless all these people. And I'm glad to give you some soup and all these things. We prayed together, and then, you know, we made two groups. Around 25 or 30 people, then one group is singing and worshiping. Another 20 people, another group, the other side. We're singing and then walking in the street. Yes, watch it. We knock the door, we reach out the door. They're scaring the us. So we're singing and we're shouting. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Jesus save you, deliver you, God destroy the plan of Satan like this. 
people are scary. And uh, one lady opened the door. She said, I used to go to the church. But now, I am rejecting my life. You know, all my family rejected me. You know what she said? All my family rejected me. Myself, I myself rejected my life. And then she said to me, last week I tried to kill myself. It was successful. She didn't, she didn't die. And then we come and sing for her and encourage her and pray for her. And then, you know, comfort her. She was crying. And she said, here am I. You love me. You welcome me. Suffer me for me. She gave her life to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> She's a 74 years old woman. She gave her life to Jesus. And the two loops. So many idols in there. <coughs> Very expensive idols made by special bronze and some images. All kinds of things. You know how big that we have big over ten bags. So many. Is one car is not enough. We need a two car. So we throw. And she comes to the church. We pray for deliverance also. You see, God called me to be a pastor to be a minister. And what I did, God gave me power to set them free, to deliver the people from darkness. Can you say to them, say teachers, God give you calling and also God give you power. Say teachers, God give you calling and God give you power. Yeah? When God give you calling and He give you ability, He give you power. Look at Romans chapter 11, verse 29. For God give and His call are irrevocable. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's good. That's cool. Uh, cool. Another translation, as the Bible says, for the gift and the calling of God are irrevocable. For he does not withdraw what he has given, nor does he change his mind about the Lord to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sent his call. God give you some calling. God already give you grace. And his calling in your life uh, never come, never change. Yeah. Therefore, he called you and give you power. <coughs> yeah. He called you and give you power. How many of you believe that you have the power and ability? Mm, yes. Nice. Can you give high five one another? God give you power and ability in Jesus' name. God give you, God give you power. power and ability in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. In Korea now, we say still people they wear the mask, uh, but. Uh, but uh, most things are open now. Let's start and things open. And uh, because of that, you know, we have high speed train in Korea, we call it KTX. So high speed, over 300 kilometers per hour. But most of the train is, is a full booking. And I was preaching in Daniel City, I tried to come back to Seoul. Oh, I checked. I went to the uh, train station, fully booked. I was in there before 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. for you. I need to find out how can I go to Seoul. And then I called a taxi. Tax price is uh, around 100 pounds for uh, uh, one hour or three minutes. And then this tax driver and then saw me and then do you know what he want to do? He want to do it is according to the, the meter reading. Immediately it is almost 200 or 300 pounds more expensive. Or come to internet price, uh, he wants to charge it two times more. And I, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, you can give the, some more, you know, 100, 100, 10 pounds, 10 pounds. And he agreed, praise God. And I told him, now we hide the, your taxi for one hour and 40 minutes, uh, and you want to wash the guy in your taxi. You don't mind? Yeah, and I tried it, and uh, you, you don't, you know, and then he said, I don't mind. And we have five missionaries to me, and I told him, now we want to have a proper service, proper like in some conference in this, uh, in this small mobile, mobile church. I said, mobile church. <laughs> he was very interesting. He just listened. <laughs> he just listened. Oh, don't drive me. And I told him, don't, don't lose your phone. You're constantly drive your car. I don't want to be able to do it. I was preaching and preaching in the, in the, in the, in the text. Guess what? The text driver 
crying and gave me gave me some life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Tend to give a big glory to the blessed Lord. Holy, God called me and then preached the gospel with the power. This text driver gave his life to Jesus. Amen. It's a proper service. And then, then I asked our team, and then we have to have offering time now. Somebody <laughs> with a special, uh, a special sing for Jesus. And one mission of singing, Amazing Grace. Right. Amazing Grace. Wonderful singing in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the taxi. And the small offering been moving around. <laughs> <laughs> and you collect the offering, and then I say to the text driver, this offering for you. Amen. And then this text that was so touching. And he opened his mouth and he told me, actually, my second son is a born again Christian. Amen. He always prayed for me. And now, you know, I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. And I told him, I know this calling. Now is the time. You preach the gospel. Whenever the, any customer comes to your taxi, <laughs> You need to say to them, Jesus, let me say, give a refer. Okay, okay. I say, yes, I will do it. And then I, you know, I need to teach you how to do it. I gave the one and the one and the replay, and then he gave the replay. He said, Jesus loves you. <laughs> Jesus loves you. <laughs> Practice inside your uh, text. Isn't that wonderful? That guy, text driver, he'll receive a calling. And he was so appreciative. I was a uh, contact in uh, you know, a in a cacao the internet, I sent a text message, a video, and I was praying for him. Thanks to God, God gave him the power to support him for somebody. Someone is start a brand new life. Amen. Isn't that wonderful news? Amen. Somebody Amen. received a calling, yes. and somebody received a power also. Amen. And, and we call Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Anybody knows that? I can do all, all things, things through Christ and Jesus. I can do all things, all these things means I can fulfill the God's calling. That's me. I can fulfill the God's calling through His power, through His ability, through Jesus Christ. Yeah? Can you say to each other, I can, I can fulfill the God's calling through His power. Say to each other, I can fulfill God's calling through His power. That's me. When Jesus called the disciples, and he didn't just send them to all of the world. No. He sent them with the power. With the power. Anybody knows that? When Jesus ascension to heaven, how many people saw Jesus? Five hundred. Five hundred people saw Jesus when Jesus ascended to heaven. But how many people remain in Jerusalem? <coughs> Jesus said to them, don't leave from Jerusalem. Receive the Holy Spirit. Stay in Jerusalem. Stay. But 380 people, they don't stay. They just gone away. Yeah. When Jesus said to them, now I know your calling, but wait upon the Holy Spirit. Receive the power, and then you can fulfill my, uh, your calling. Yeah. Jesus promised Look at it. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18 say, And these signs will accompany you. Those who believe in my name, they will drive out the demons. Yeah. They will speak in new tongues. Mm -hmm. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And uh, when they drink deadly, deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. Amen. They will place their hand on them, on people, and who are here, and they will get well. Jesus promised with the disciples. When you pray for people, and uh, you can you can you can pray for them, and healing coming, you can drive the demons. Even you pick up the snakes with your hand, you'll be okay. When you drink the dead in the poison, yeah, you'll be okay. But some people they mis misunderstand this this uh, scripture. Oh, they will pick up the snakes with their hand. Have you seen that some church in uh, some some church in America does their cult? They put so many dangerous snakes inside the church. They say, hallelujah, hallelujah, and they pick up the snake. And, <laughs> and two people died yes. in the church. Oh, you know, it's a film like that. I saw. Did you see it on YouTube? Mm. Two people died. And the pastor condemned these people. Oh. These two people, they don't have enough faith. <laughs> and they died. How foolish. Very. Yes. Yeah, they don't. 
I'm less the guy like that. Mm -hmm. You know, what does mean? They will pick up snacks with their hand. It means you don't look for snack or no, no. You know, when you are in, in jungle, when you are in the, some kind of situation, and then, you know, externally, something happening. Mm -hmm. And God uh, will protect you. Mm -hmm. Many, many years ago, I was not born again. And then I sleep in the, <clears throat> you know, we have a very big farm. And then there's a, some, some small, some house in the, in, in the field. And then um, I slept everywhere in the house. It's not that, like I said, not on the, in the house days, like the storage, offices, I, I sleep in there. And I slept very well. Well, very strange on my feet. And in the morning, I wake up and remove my blanket. You know what I saw? Very dangerous snack. The corner and the sleep together with me. <laughs> in your dream? No, it's not. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's screaming. You know what I did? Because it was so scary. I had like kicking the, the snack. And snack fly from uh, first floor. To, uh, it was the first time in my life where I slept together with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and the last time. And the last time, right? That's the last time. And then, you know, when they drink the deadly poison, they do not come back at all. Sometimes, two times, uh, you know, by mistake, you think that the deadly poison. But God will protect you. Amen. 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 God will protect you from all the dangers and darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. I know. I know. The very dangerous in the mission field sometimes. Very dangerous. People try to kill you. You understand? Don't tell me only some some India or Africa or some 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 some, some strange area that poison or not. Even in Korea. They car accident. Very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. Have you heard about uh, uh, Douglas and MacArthur? Douglas and MacArthur. Because of this Douglas and MacArthur, uh, then South Korea will not become a communist country. Because of the, uh, in 1950, there's war between South and North Korea. Mm -hmm. Number three biggest war in the world is a Korean War. First war, Second World War, and Korean War. Number three biggest war. And then, do you know what was happening? The North Koreans, uh, they almost conquered the South Korea. And uh, Douglas uh, MacArthur is an American general. He is the one to uh, bring the great victory for South Korea. And he was a born again Christian. And his prayer is a very powerful prayer, a prayer for son, Douglas and MacArthur. And this prayer, build me a son or Lord who will be strong enough to know when he is weak, brave enough to face himself when he is afraid, one he and who will be proud and unbending in honest defeat, humble and gentle in victory, building a son whose wishes will not take the place of a deed, a son will, who will know to and that, that law himself is the foundation stone of knowledge. Lead him, I pray, not in the path of ease or comfort, but under the stress and spoil of difficulties and challenge. Here, I may, uh, here I let him learn to stand up in the storm, and here let him learn compassion for those who fail. Give him a son um, whose, her, whose heart will be clear whose goal will be high and the son will master himself before he seek to master another man. One who will reach into the future and never forget the past. And after all these things he's had, I pray in other sense of humor, so that he may always be serious, yet never take himself too seriously, giving humility so that he may always remember the simplicity of a true greatness, to open mind of true wisdom, and the meekness of true strength. Then I, his father, uh, will dare to whisper, I have not lived in vain. His prayer, he said, my prayer, not the path of easy comfort, my son, 
but the spell of difficulties and challenge, and the little one, he can overcome the storms and the mountains. And you have to say, if you storm or difficult come normally, they they avoid. Can you overcome? Can you overcome? If in front of you can see the big mountain, you may say to the Lord, I don't want to overcome this mountain. I can go beside. Uh, uh, this prayer of uh, Dr. MacArthur, he prayed like this. Let my son strong enough. Let my son grow up. Let my son is a very powerful man to overcome the darkness. Yeah, this is his prayer. You know, when you live in this world, the, the suffering and difficulty in here. But what is my your prayer? Oh, God help me to overcome. If you are strong, yeah? If you are strong enough, all the temptation, no more temptation in your life. And I, do you understand that? You know, Joseph overcome the te temptation of you know, sexual immunity, yeah? yeah? Joseph. For well, Joseph, he is a strong in that area. He overcome the temptation of the evil one. You know, what about the one say to you? Again and again, nobody in this house, you and me, do you understand? This poor wife so wicked and tempted him again and again. But what Joseph did, he overcome. Why? Because he's a very strong. He overcome. Can you say, Peter, be strong and overcome the temptation? Say, Peter, Amen. be strong and overcome the temptation of the evil ones. Amen. Why you didn't overcome the temptation of the evil ones? So you're not strong. You understand? If you're not strong enough, if you're not powerful enough, you don't overcome the temptation of the evil one. Grow up. Grow up. You know, long time ago, when this thing, that some things is a very, very, is a difficult to overcome. But now, because you are strong and mature enough, you can overcome the temptation of the evil one. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, yeah? yeah? Since I get married, yeah, I don't have any really temptation of sexual attack. You know, when I was young, it's difficult. That is why if you are if you are young man and woman, if you have some sexual uh, immorality or difficulty in that area, try to not get married quickly. Mm. Yes, yes. I mean, that is what I don't care about. Yeah. Yeah. Don't wait. Yeah. Huh? They say, oh, I think about they get married or prepare. Me. They, they, they think about for four or five years, <laughs> and then they come to say they marry the different man, different woman. If you know on the catch calling, you can. Yeah. Don't wait. Well done, Sister Kate, you went, eh? yeah. You find uh, your, your your husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well done. <laughs> In young age, she knows this this is my husband. I can marry. Yeah. Look at the John sixteen verse thirty three. John sixteen thirty three. I have told you this thing so that in me you may have a perfect peace. In the world, you have a tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous, be comfortable, and be uh, undaunted. And feel with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is uh, complete. My victory abiding. You know what Jesus said? This is the word of Jesus, John chapter 16, verse 33. In the last day, you will, you will, yeah, you will have a tribulation, distress, and suffering. Yeah. It's not my word. You happy about that? You have a suffering, distress, and tribulation? Yes, or no? No, we don't want to. It's not my word. It's the word of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said, you will have in the last day these things. But, but, don't lose your perfect peace. Amen? Amen. Can you say to, say to you, don't lose the perfect peace in the last day, said to each other. Don't lose your perfect peace in the last day. Don't lose your perfect peace. Yeah? Have confidence. Yeah? In the last day. In, in the last day, you can see some tribulation, some difficulties, hardship. But don't lose your peace. Have you seen the, the Russians? They, they use the energy. And it is like the, the, the like a weapon now. Food is like a weapon. Mm. Russians, even Chinese, we can be careful. This, uh, you know, 
I, I love the Russians. I love the Chinese people. But the, the spirit that will the communism, they have to stand in the spirit. Do you understand? Xi Jinping's spirit, Mr. Putin's spirit is the same spirit that Mr. Hamad in the Middle East. They try to kill all you know, the Ukraine. This is dangerous. And now what happened? The food price is increased. In South Korea, the petrol price is twice now. Yeah, even here. Even here. How much is it a uh, uh, diesel now, Marita? Ten nine. One pound. Diesel. Here, yeah, where? Here. Yeah. Yeah. It's two something. Two pounds something. It went up to two pounds last time. Almost well, two pounds. No, over two pounds. Over two pounds. Yes, it's about two two thirty two something. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
he was the end of the stomach of fish and repentance sins. And then uh, he continued uh, from the Almighty God. Matthew chapter 25, verse 22 say, His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. God encourage you to be faithful with a few things. Thank you, Pastor Julio. He's very faithful. He comes to the morning service. It's not easy. Every day, Monday to Friday. And evening. Thank you, Pastor Bernie. We are done. We are faithful. I saw that you on one of Wednesday evening, I think Friday when you preach it. Thank you. Be faithful to the point of death. Yeah. When you live in this world, you have to be faithful. Be faithful. And God said you good and faithful. 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 Well done. Well done. And say, teacher, well done, good and well faithful servant. Well, 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 well done, well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name. Yes, well done, and good and faithful servant. I was preaching in the big church, over 7,000 members in uh, Korea. And then uh, I saw the pastor reaching the pastor. I saw the congregation. I saw the, the church. The church, all the congregation, so faithful. You know what God has done for them? In the COVID time, God did that. Uh, Huge people over 10 broad. Yeah, I think their price over 10 million pounds. God gave them great financially and even spiritually. God bless them abundantly. Why? When God saw them, they are so faithful servant. And God gave them. Yeah. If God sees you as a faithful servant, then God give you more and more and more. Because you are very faithful with a few things. And God said, I will put you in charge of many things. God promised me that I will put you in charge of many things. Yeah. Because you are faithful. Yeah. Then you say to each other, if you are faithful in the eyes of the Lord, God give you more. Say to each other, if you are faithful in the eyes of the Lord, God give you more. Yeah. 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 One Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 say, then this is how how to regard us. And the servant of Christ and his order in trust with the mystery. God has revealed. Now it is required. You know what kind of it is required that those who have been given of trust must prove faithful. When God gives you something, yeah, God requires about your faithful. You need to prove it. How faithful to serve Almighty God. Uh, brother, brother, you are. You are, and then, uh, where is the change? He prayed uh, in the home. Yeah, same age. They are born in 2005. 17 years old, boys. They came to UK as a missionary. You will be faithful. Amen. Amen. He couldn't understand English properly in this place. Please help him. Eh? Help him to uh, learn uh, English. Yeah. I believe that these two boys. Uh, must be faithful in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Not only two boys, everybody. Can you say to you, be faithful in the eyes of the Lord. Say to Jesus, be faithful in the eyes of the Lord. Remember these three things God will be using the mighty. If you, yeah, if you are, if you receive the calling of the Lord. Yeah? Number two, if you, if you understand the, the power of God in your calling. And if you are faithful in the eyes of the Lord. Can you pray? You can pray like this. Oh God, help me understand your calling. Oh God, give me your power to fulfill your calling. Oh God, help me to be faithful to the eyes of the Lord. Can you call over three times Jesus and pray just one and two minutes? Let's pray together. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Before you are born in this world, I call to you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah, he received a calling, and then God gave him power. God touched his mouth. I have my word in your mouth. 
And Lord Jesus, we thank you. You called us to be a pastor, to be a missionary, to be a holy Christian. And we know that our call. To increase the goodness of Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus, can you give us your power? Give us your power and authority. And the drive of demons and this kind of generosity. Jesus, we thank you. Oh Lord, help us to be faithful in Jesus' name. Be faithful to the point of that. Oh God, help us. When I pray for you, if you touch your heart, I can pray for you. You understand the calling of God and you receive the power of God. Also, you will be faithful before God and God will use you. When God is using you, because you are so faithful and we love you, God will put your law, many things yes. in your heart. And then God will say to you, Well done, good and faithful servant. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus of Nazareth, my brother and sister, touch their heart. Touch their heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, receive your calling in Jesus' name. Amen. Calling of the Lord is come up on you right now. And Isaiah, he heard the voice of God. It's a monologue. Oh God, help us to understand your calling. And Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Oh Lord, we will receive your calling right now. Oh God, can you give us your power in Jesus' name? Receive the power in Jesus' name. Receive the power of God right now in Jesus' name. Oh God, help us to receive the power and the increase the goodness of Jesus. Be faithful to the point of that. Oh God, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we glory in Jesus. Bless the Spirit of the Lord. Right on the high five the Lord. Be faithful. Be faithful to the point of that, said Jesus. Be faithful, be faithful to the point of that. Be faithful to the point of that.